from the podcast if you don't want to watch the whole bit. Number one, Pinterest almost failed seven times before they nailed their iconic staggered view UI. Number two, they stayed invite only even after hitting one million users. And number three, their secret retention weapon, email, the most underrated tool ever. Want the full story? Watch our 10 minute podcast with Pinterest's founding engineer, Yash Nalapati. How did you end up creating a staggered view as the UI? Which is still something extremely unique. We don't really find it anywhere even today. When I met Ben, who spearheaded the product called Pinterest, like his vision was much bigger. As a kid, he always loved collecting stuff on from the magazines, just like cutting and like, you know, pasting them, making a book. He kind of called those mood boards or taste books. And he wanted to bring that human behavior called collecting onto the internet and apply this algorithm and see how it works. So they spent a lot of time just specking out and like just designing mock boards and like UIs and stuff. They did that process for almost like a year, you know, on and off. So I guess after seven failed items, there's so much that one can learn. And that, that was the inception of Pinterest. So, and the second is that you very seamlessly moved from web to a mobile app. We, we got a ton of email from people saying like, I would love to do this on my ride to work and, you know, out somewhere. So I think it was inevitable that we had to bring this experience to mobile. And we, we knew that the great design was interest and people just remember us for that. So we knew that like we had to bring it in a way that it's seamless and we did and uh, luckily it worked out. We had an opportunity or to also speak with Bessemer Ventures and they said that, you know, when uh, they invested in Pinterest, they did not understand exactly what was happening at Pinterest, but they saw like a lot of traction and hence they decided to invest in it. But everyone who's building anything is dealing with a lot of data and different types of data. So how do you cut through the noise and say that this is an insight and I'm going to take this and build upon it from a thousand feet view we kind of understood what was going on but when we go to present things in a scientific or a mathematical formula it it wasn't like we got it there were many many metrics that were we were tracking and then we started tracking different things to understand if that gave us more insights it takes an army of people and a long time to understand the product so what um What comes first, your gut or analytics? It's always the gut, I think, that starts. I think we had, I mean, like, basically, we had that insight on why people were using it. I think all the early investors, all they asked is like, hey, we just want access to your Google Analytics, nothing much. So we gave them and, like, basically, we learned, like, oh, the average session, an average user session is about 15 minutes or 12 minutes, which is way higher compared to Reddit or any platform. So basically, they were giving us a lot of unique insights too because we were just focused on... Because they were looking at many companies. Hmm. Hmm. That's really interesting. And uh, so like in Facebook's journey, politics was one thing which uh, made them appeal to a really large audience. So what was that for Pinterest? I think it was more DIY, equal amount weddings too. So I would say those both were the top performing buckets. uh, Got it. Almost every user activated those topics facebook and twitter were also around when you guys were building this particular thing and they were growing at a crazy pace so did you guys ever feel the need to take any inspiration from them in any way i think pinterest as a product we knew that there will be like it's it's a journey through a human's life you know when someone's getting married they're very on it and then after wedding they're done like wow my god every journey is different I think the founders are mature enough to understand when things work. I think they get enough help to understand like, hey, like you're not a fast, like, you know, bright company that's going to flash and just like, you know, probably disappear. You have a much longer vision to execute. And how do you in general stay confident with your unique vision, despite when probably some other companies are growing? Faster pace. I think momentum is the right word that I always use. And you try a lot of things, but like the reality is you can't beat the physics. So it's just understanding that I need to become a ball, which means I need to shave unnecessary stuff, become fluid and then build momentum. I think the evolution as an entrepreneur is to understand how do I mold myself into that? 
what's your philosophy when you hire engineers other than obviously their uh, skill set the one principle i always tell myself over and over again is just hire fast and fire fast pair programming is something i love to do my round is just like give me two and a half hours i just usually bring people into the office and just make them work with me because i have certain environment i just want to understand them as teammates i look for generalists rather than specialists a philosophical question now every product impacts society so what do you think pinterest has brought an impact as in a change to civilization i think the impact has been great like i felt like there wasn't a tool up until pinterest where i could express myself what is yash about like i don't think there was any tool you go see my twitter facebook you could get a sense of what are my politics or sports or, or like a slice of that area where you can understand what my views are but i don't think there's a product that can give a holistic view on what is this person and i when i look at someone's pinterest profile i could take a very good sense of what this person is about how their taste might have changed over time so i feel i i felt like that is a very good product for the society and like for them to collect get inspired go do something and then again present it back to the community you know pinterest is the only product which is addictive has a scroll but it's not emotionally traumatizing getting the users onto the platform great you're going great you're growing fast now how do you retain so if you can take us through how what are some of the early retention strategies that you guys adopted to keep the user on the platform and ensure that you know the stickiness is there so i think email has been a huge platform for us and in terms of activating and keeping the user engaged and if you can use that platform effectively i think that that is a huge way to grow you have to humanize that rather than just like make it sound like a robot I remember when like he used text expander so he had a lot of snippets and like just like rt like tab and that would like okay thank you for like you know using pinterest blah 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 and then he would just add a very humanized three four statements like hey by the way i checked like the last time i checked your board i really love that pin that is something that like i want to do and so so the emails were very personal and there was a very special focus on making them sound personal and like even the first set of hires like enid and all like they were incredibly great in bringing that human voice and like make you like not talking to a robot or like some algorithm and it is so interesting you know email comes across as a lost art now at least for retention now i think the first 5000 people is pretty easy i mean uh, at least now it has now, been now, uh, extremely defined that you right? know you can either have a short video you will get to 5000 10000 users yeah but then uh, how do you move from 10000 to 10 million users what specific uh, marketing or product strategies were most impactful for you at pinterest i think the first first set of people who were working at pinterest including the founders were were all extremely shy so i felt like the product did most of the talking it was very like simple it was invite only for a long time It's a user to user invite if i join the platform then i get to invite a few people yeah and then what user base were you just invite based i think even i think the first 500 to million 500000 to million users it was still invite we had invite code that has like 10000 counter so 10000 people can sign up with that invite code and we were giving oh, them to very famous bloggers and stuff oh. to sit i mean i think it's a really new thing for us to know that you were just only invite till a million users anyway so um, one of the most talked about things in tech businesses is creation of moats now is it something that you guys deliberately think and talked about it or it just happened due to the core product market fit i remember a lot of times ben was presenting to the entire company like if you know what you want amazon google everyone has solved a problem there's like 90% of this pie that is like you don't know what you want you just have to sift through hundreds of thousands of web pages to learn that that is one pan that i want for cooking that 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 one really connects me like i like the look feel of it i want to yeah. hold it in my hand inspiring guiding the user through that journey to bringing them to a decision moment is the hardest journey and it has never been like 
done before. It's like a very fragmented TV ad space, 90 seconds ads that's just showing and like missing a lot of people because it's not targeted to the right age group or you know, age or sex. So, so in a way, like, you know, the product was so important and like you need to feel that ownership of this problem. 